Good afternoon. I am Danny Perez, and this is my wife, Grace. Yeah, she's my wife, believe it or not, okay? We are servants of, servant leaders of CCF Beyond, and more importantly, we are Christians who accepted the challenge of Christ to make disciples. We are true blue CCFers coming to Christ in CCF, leading cell groups, heading the training department, becoming an elder, and even leading the Purpose Driven Life campaign um, in the past. Most people would say we were very fruitful and successful in our Christian lives and ministries. Then in 1998, I got paralyzed, waist down. I was at the prime of my corporate life. I was the president of Sara Lee Philippines when I got struck with a rare disease that puzzled the doctors. The doctors operated on me but told my wife that I will probably be on a wheelchair for the rest of my life. I was only 45 then. Looking back, I know it was part of God's plan to humble me. Did I need humbling then? I was proud and selfish, and I did not know it. I was an area pastor and a Bible teacher then. But as I look back, and as I got feedback from the people who worked with me and under me, they told me I was sima, simangot, okay, and suplado, yabang. I see some of you who know me smiling right now because you agree that I was really that unapproachable and sung it indeed in the past. I realized that God wanted me lower and what better way than making you paralyzed waist down. In His grace, as you can see, I am up and walking. But because God wanted me to never forget my lesson on humility, my legs are still numb to this day. He uses that to remind me of my arrogance daily and that I need to grow to even become more humble and selfless. In 2006, God gave us what we thought was the opportunity of a lifetime. Our whole family was approved for immigration to the United States. I said, God is really good, huh? What a blessing. The USA, the land flowing with steak and butter. The American dream come true. What a reward for being saved, being a pastor at that. Galing talaga ni God, so I thought. I thought we were headed for the best years of our lives in Los Angeles. Little did I know that it was going to be humility 102, humility 103, humility 104, 105 for all of us, me and my family. God knew that I was still not fully surrendered and dependent on Him. He brought me to America to rid me of my pride, selfishness, and sense of security, our bank account. You see, I retired at the age of 48 because I got a very good retirement bundle as a company president. We brought the money to the United States and brought our home. On top of this, we were asked to lead Bible studies and start the groups, do retreats, and preach in Filipino churches. After all, I was a trained pastor, and God was using me indeed, or so I thought. Then the dominoes started to fall one after another. The couple that asked us to teach in their Bible study and start discipling them turned against us and maligned us, saying, that I was a thief and abused their goodwill. The Bible study group that grew so big was affected and split. People were disillusioned and left. We were devastated and certainly brought down. Then, the investment and business ventures I started in the USA all turned sour, resulting in big losses, dwindling our bank savings. 
I had no choice except to look for work. From being a company president, I became a door-to-door -door sales consultant of a solar company, knocking on doors. The company manager saw my skills and noted my overqualification and thought that I would be an instant success. But the exact opposite happened. It was clear that God was not blessing anything I would do that is money-related. Clearly, God continued to make His agenda of humility for me to happen. The final blow that brought us to our lowest came three years ago. I was informed by my Christian brother and business partner in Manila that the business we started prior to my departure for the USA in 2006 had hit dead end and we all had financial liabilities to settle running into millions of pesos. When he told me how much I owed and I needed to pay, I became catatonic and lost in space for some time. Only one solution, we sell our house and other properties to pay off these liabilities. Why did God allow this, we asked. Answer, Romans 8, 29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. God allowed the problems we went through to empty me in every way to make me humble. It was at this point that I asked God, thank you for doing this to me. I want to say sorry and please direct my life from this day forward. My wife was assuring all these difficult times, and I praise God for her. I assured Danny that God is in control and kept reminding him by saying, God is more important to us. God has a plan for us. Pera lang yan. Through all these trials, God taught us a valuable lesson about discipleship being a disciple means being more and more like Christ. God in His grace will make sure He will be Christ-like humble indeed if you are His child. And until then, He will not cease to mold you until Jesus is formed in you. If you resist, He may allow you to go through problems like we did to make you Christ-like, selfless, and humble. We realize that that is God's reactive way. If you are stiff-necked and stubborn, he will break you because you are his chosen one. And he said he will do it for you for sure. That's exactly what God did to us with emphasis on him. Then in 2014, we were approached and asked if we would become church planters for CCF in North America. It was challenge accepted for us because I thought I could no longer fight God, and I do not like more pain to be inflicted to be humbled. And this started our journey to intentional disciple-making. We revisited our bearings, and we discovered once again the objectives of disciple-making, to make followers of Christ, and the end goal is Christ-like maturity in the disciple. We became intentional to make sure that Christ-likeness or selfless humility grows evidently and consistently with all our disciples, and there was only one way to do it. We had to model selfless humility to them, and because of that, we, the disciples, became even more humble and selfless in the process. Our aha moment was this. Making disciples is God's proactive appointed way to make us conform to the image of Christ as we keep modeling Christ-like humility to others. And this made us realize the value and deep importance of the challenge of making disciples. Then the reality of the promise in the challenge to make disciples kicked in. Matthew 28, 20 promised the abiding presence of Jesus always to the disciple maker. For the past three years, my wife and I saw the reality of His promise. We began to see right before our eyes His presence that worked wonders and miracles in the birthing of four new CCF satellites in Canada less than one year after we took the challenge 
to make disciples who will make disciples. Not only that, God worked within our family and He allowed me to disciple our family. I discipled my wife and we discipled our children by modeling selfless humility to them, by seeking out their interests and creating genuine relationships with them. This is continuing today and this was made possible only because Jesus was with us always indeed, making sure that our humility is rewarded and appreciated. The disciple-making movement in Canada blossomed, and all this was made possible because of simple men and women, simple couples like you and me who accepted the challenge. Believe it or not, we, all of us, were intimidated and felt inadequate. But once we said, Lord, challenge accepted, we were blessed and transformed ourselves. These men and women today are teeming with confidence and assurance with God's presence always to those who are making disciples so they make disciples. The impossible becomes possible, the lost will be found, and the gospel can be preached to the ends of the earth. I hope there are pictures at my back showing some simple men and women that we discipled. Today, CCF Beyond has 19 CCF satellites, nine house churches, and many more discipleship groups and D groups scattered in more than 50 countries around the world. Thank you. Along with Pastor Joey Hieronimo and the Beyond team, we are trusting God that humble, Christ-like servants will multiply many times over in the years to come. If these men and women did it by simply accepting the challenge of God to make disciples in places they were planted, then you, our dear brothers and sisters, can experience the Almighty and His awesome glory by accepting the challenge wherever you are in this world today. You can accept the challenge through the going, the praying, and the sending that Pastor Jim shared with us. In the handout of the challenge accepted, you will see the details of how you can go and accept the challenge. If you want to be part of this movement, you can visit our installation downstairs in the main lobby, ask them how you can be involved, fill out a response slip, and submit it to the, our volunteers. In return, they will give you a magnet that says, Challenge Accepted, and that you can put that on your ref to remind you of your commitment every day. We pray that you will be like us, simple men and women of CCF, who were blessed because we accepted the challenge to go, pray, send. Again, we challenge you, go, pray, send. To God be the glory. Thank you very much. <laughs>